We've, we've been having a lot of researchers uh, presenting to us presently, and uh, there's a unison of all researchers at the moment which kind of paint a relatively stable, growthy kind of line moving forward. That always, that's nice, but they do that every year, and they do it every year even if there's a crisis around the corner. So prognosis of flat lines have this thing of always being contradicted somewhere down the line relatively quicker than their actual prognosis. Um, but generally, we do tend to agree at the moment. I mean, there are no signs on the European basis uh, to see any slowing down of either rental growth. Now, always on a general, you may see it in Warsaw. I fully agree, it's an overdeveloped country. Uh, but generally, Europe is, is, is there on a not particularly stimulating growth scenario, um, which makes rental growth very specific. It, and I agree with the Stockholm and the Nordic uh, issue there. I, I do tend to disagree on the Finland issue. I do see, uh, see a, a lot harsher um, reaction in Finland, and you know, I, I might as well say it now and get it out of the way, but Phoenix is, of course, on the table now as well. But generally, I think Europe is on a, on a trait. Um, us, as an investor, just like many others, uh, you have the combination of the wall of money uh, still targeting Europe, uh, the interest in real estate, the TINA scenario, um, which means there is no alternative. Uh, real estate is outperforming a lot of the other uh, asset classes, where else are you going to go? There's still the mentality that real estate is the new, pri uh, the new uh, fixed income, uh, hence why pressure on yields has the potential to be there. Now, um, you have, funnily enough, a relatively good rental growth scenario. Now, having you know, 30 billion assets under management, we're not a strong believer in realizing that rental growth, uh, to tell you the, the truth because it's very pocketed, and, it, and you have to be in a, in a cycle, and you know, you're buying longer leases, you may just get past the cycle. So realizing it on a big portfolio is difficult, uh, but then again, leasing ratios are more important for us, i.e. just being high on a, on, a, on a leasing level, and that seems to be good. And our main point, really, in our decisions, if Nordics or Europe is on the supply side, so we're monitoring the development uh, indexes very, very closely. Who's oversupplying? Because if there is a slowdown, uh, it's what you want to avoid is the double whammy at the end, i.e. an oversupply and a downturn, yeah? and then high increases of, of, of vacancy, because that's really going to hurt your performance and then uh, hurt, hurt your uh, return expectation for your investors. So generally, Europe, we feel safe in. Uh, it's, it's, it's a market that we're going to do the most in. And Nordics is a strong part of that for us, even though I have to admit Sweden is probably the one focus for us. Denmark, we find it difficult to source the product uh, that we are looking for. Finland, we have a bit, bit of a risk aversion. Norway is slowing down. And Sweden is actually giving it, g making it possible for us to compete due to the fact that the um, hedge costs have come down due to the diversion of, uh, of the interest rate uh, between Germany and, and Sweden. So hence why after this, uh, I'm having a couple of chats with lawyers and uh, hope that we can commit some capital.